global race to get populations vaccinated against COVID, one African nation appears to be on the verge of a major success. Botswana has been able to order enough vaccines to inoculate every adult in the country. It has several advantages in this race. Its total population at nearly two and a half million is relatively small and it's one of Africa's richest nations as well. It also helps that the country has invested heavily in public health education after a long battle with HIV and AIDS. But this isn't all a good news story for Botswana. Their vaccines haven't all arrived yet and shipments from India have been slowed because of that country's outbreak. And the national economy is reeling because one of its biggest industries, tourism, has been decimated by the pandemic. Time now for the exchange where we take a deeper dive on Botswana and the lessons we can all learn from its handling of the pandemic. A short time ago, I sat down with Botswana's president. Our conversation began with a discussion about India's terrible COVID outbreak and how it's impacted Botswana's vaccine supply. Take a listen. Well, you know, I must begin by expressing my uh, sympathies and uh, uh, saying how we feel for India uh, as it goes through this terrible time and uh, applaud what it did initially when they were completely convinced that they had overcome their worst. Uh, when they did donate, when they did ship out, uh, we must remember that India uh, is the home to the biggest pharmaceutical manufacturers of vaccines. And clearly, when they're hit as hard as they are, it only is natural for them to look to their own first. And that will affect supply to other countries, Botswana included. And uh, fortunately, as a, the multilateral world we live in, there are other places that do produce vaccines after satisfying what they have, uh, accept that uh, the problem is not over in their own countries until the whole world is vaccinated. So Absolutely. we look to uh, some of these supplies from other suppliers to the best of their ability. Right, and China is certainly one of those suppliers. Botswana has one of the highest rates of infection in terms of HIV in the world. Um, the good news, though, is that you have really worked hard to lay the groundwork in terms of public health education, health infrastructure. How has that helped you deal with the current crisis with COVID? I couldn't imagine us trying to do it without that benefit of such infrastructure. We develop this capacity by mobilizing the population to enroll you know, emotionally into this. And then the structures were put in place to distribute, to provide psychosocial support and counseling, which includes psychosocial support for enrolling and the mitigation that uh, goes on. It's multi-layered. It's at community level, family level. It's at a sub-district level, sub-national level. It's at the national level. And it's multi-layered. So, we are very determined to borrow on, springboard, and really push through on the basis and on the strength of our past experiences with HIV and AIDS. Just want to pivot slightly now, turning to Mozambique. Obviously, Mozambique has made headlines in the past few months because they have a massive ISIS insurgency in that country. How concerned are you about regional security um, if the ISIS threat in Mozambique isn't quashed right now? You know, any iota of threat to any part of Mozambique is an ominous threat to the region and to global peace and security. And sitting here as the chair of the organ on politics, defense and security for SADC, which is charged with making sure that we are at the forefront of the prevention of insecurity, we are resolute in our engagement with Mozambique and the authorities, we are resolute in our engagement with one another to help Mozambique as a sovereign nation state to deal with this insurgency. And so we're gonna have a summit um, uh, fairly soon uh, to deal with this. Um, one area that Botswana depends on, apart from diamond mining, is of course tourism. The tourism industry for a lot of African countries, in fact, a lot of global countries has of course been decimated by COVID. Um, what strategies are you going to implement in the coming years to really help your tourism sector get back on its feet in the wake of this pandemic? Well, besides the traditional mitigation interventions we've had, you know, such as a, a, a you know, wage subsidy and uh, subsidy to companies and firms, 
the public health interventions, broad-based, national, to finally yield a safe and secure Botswana to visit will land us in a good space. Ultimately, we'd hope to yield a very safe Botswana and then market that as such. Botswana has the highest population of elephants in the world. One of the issues that your country has run into with that is that sometimes these elephants can roam, sometimes that they, they can uh, roam to populated villages, uh, farms. As a result, your government has issued licenses to kill about 287 elephants. Um, when the conservation community, when environmentalists react to that with concern, can you understand their perspective? Uh, look, Zane, we have the highest concentration of elephants in the wild in the world. Now, if you tell me that didn't come about because of concerted, deliberate, successful conservation, give me a place which is more successful. Now, we didn't conserve them so that we can brutalize them. No. And in Botswana, it's not so much that sometimes an elephant will be in conflict with people. The fact is, it's an oxymacy. They do, very frequently. And if you know what it might be like to encounter an elephant, usually the human being is the one that loses out. Uh, these are my population that suffer uh, the ravages of elephant affliction and um, uh, injury, and sometimes death. It, they must be looked at as human beings. Another example, of course, would be oil drilling in places like Namibia and Botswana. How do you juggle economic growth, protecting the um, security of the population, etc., with also balancing what the earth needs in terms of climate change and conservationism? Well, for us, the default position is always one from a premise of protection of the environment. Because whatever you do uh, through industrialization, it has got to be sustainable. And so, and that's why we do not and will not allow for fracking. We will not, we do not, we have not. We do not mind though people exploring for availability, presence of quantities of all sorts of minerals, rare earth um, on our soils but we will not compromise the quality of environment, particularly and particularly in a very frail ecosystem, sensitive ecosystem like the Okavango Delta and its basin. President Masisi, thank you so much for being with us.